Hi, and welcome to the ninth episode of Learning to Edit in DaVinci Resolve. My name's Darren Austin, and in this episode, we're going to look at color grading. So over the next few minutes, we're going to look at scopes, we're going to look at nodes, we're going to look at auto color, primary grading, shot matching, lookup tables, grouping, and stills. But first of all, I'm just going to give you an overview of the color page itself. So in the top left corner here, this is the gallery where we store all our stills. In the center here, we have the viewer, which displays the clips that we're actually working on. And down here, this is the timeline viewer. This is displaying the shots in the order they are in the edit page. Up here, we have our node area. So this is where we build our grades. On the right hand side is the open effects, which contains all the filters that we might need to use. And at the top, we have Lightbox, which is a really quick and easy way of viewing all your clips. This is a mini timeline based on our edit page. And down in the lower half of the screen, you're looking at all the tools that we use to do the color grading. So over here, we have our primary grading tools. Here is our curves and secondary grading tools. And over here, we have the ability to do keyframing and look at scopes. Just as you can in the edit page, we can open and close some of these windows. So we could close the gallery. We can collapse the timeline. We can change the windows. We could close down the effects. So you can really set up the page exactly how you want it to be. So a really useful tool when you're color grading is to use the video scopes. If you press Shift Command W, that will open up the four scopes in a separate window. If you have a dual screen display, you can actually put the scopes onto your second monitor. So let's change the image that we're looking at. Let's click on this one here. If we look at a histogram, it's showing us how many pixels are in each brightness range. So zero is black and 100 is white. So we can see clearly here there's plenty of headroom still in the highlights. Looking at the waveform, it's again showing luminance similar to the histogram, but this is showing me exactly where the peak brightness or dark areas are in the actual image. If you go from left to right on the waveform, it's mirroring left to right of the actual video signal itself. And if you look at the center of that waveform, you can make out the hat and the white stripe down his arm. Looking at our vector scope, vector scope isn't measuring brightness or luminance at all. It's purely dealing with saturation. So if I boost saturation, you'll see the color lines in the vector scope expanding. Let me just adjust the vector scope so you can see that more clearly. There, now you can see that the stronger the color or saturation, the further out the lines go. If I reduce saturation completely, you see that there is actually no reading at all on the vector scope. Let me just reset that. And finally, the RGB parade. The parade is working exactly the same as the waveform, but it's showing each individual channel of red, green, and blue separately. So it's still going from left to right of the video image, but it just shows it as a compressed view. So I can see here that we've got slightly more blue in the highlights than we have red tones. And we can just close the scopes here. So let's take a look at nodes. Each clip contains one serial node by default. You can have as many nodes as you like on a clip, and a serial node is by far the most common node. Think of each node as a kind of layer. So you'd apply a grade or a filter to the first node. And then when you're happy, you'd apply a second node and make further adjustments from there. And you can build up as many nodes as you like in order to get the look that you require. So I'm just gonna move down the timeline and find a different shot to grade. You see straight away it's got its first node. And we can see quite clearly this shot is very light. It's got no real contrast or color to it. So let's perform an auto grade. Just press this A down here. And we can see immediately that adjustments have been made to lift and gain. Lift, gamma, gain are the three separate brightness areas that we can work in. So it's shadows, midtones, and highlights. And we can control the brightness and the color in those separate properties. So this really gives you good control over your grade. And this grade has come across into the edit page too. If we switch to the edit page, you see that this shot has that grade applied to it. So auto grade can be a good start, but let's have a look at how to balance a shot using the color wheels. I'm gonna reset this node, right hand click and say reset node. And we're back to where we started from before the auto grade. And I'm gonna bring up my waveform, but I'm gonna bring it up on my timeline here. So that stays permanently there. You can choose from any of the four scopes. And straight away, you can see that lift or the shadows are set up way too high on here. So we can adjust that using the lift control. I'm sliding this wheel down and I'm watching the waveform to see when blacks hit the bottom. So I'm not gonna go quite to zero, but somewhere near. Let's just expand gain. This is gonna lift the highlights up a little bit. And there, we've got much better contrast in the image now with just two moves. Now the image still looks a little bit blue, so let's switch from the waveform to the parade. 
And what you can see in the parade is that the blue is much higher than the green and red. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make an adjustment in the colour to lift and I'm going to push away from blue. I'm going to push towards its complementary colour. The complementary colour of blue is yellow. So I'm going to push away from blue to slightly yellow. And you see the parade is actually starting to balance out a little bit. So the blue is adjusting and the other colours are adjusting too. I'm just going to push gamma towards the reds a little bit. And now we've got a much more balanced shot. And you can see that quite clearly in the viewer. So this is primary grading. And so another popular way of getting a first look is to use a lookup table, otherwise known as a LUT. So what a LUT does is take you from one colour space to another colour space, but using maths. So it's a very technical process. Often camera manufacturers will provide you with a lookup table that you can apply, and that will take you from the camera manufacturer's raw colour space into the correct colour space. So the colour space we work with in HD is called Rec 709. So by simply applying a LUT, the maths will convert the Blackmagic Cinema RAW file into Rec 709, thereby giving us a more technically accurate look. If you're using LUTs, make sure that you're using the correct LUTs from the correct camera manufacturer, otherwise you can actually be reducing the amount of colour space that you're working in. So as you can see down here, these clips are ProRes 422. There's no point in me applying the LUTs to ProRes 422 clips because the maths would be incorrect. The LUT that we're going to use relies on using raw camera files. So we're going to find some Cinema DNG raw files. So we've got one here, it's Cinema DNG file, and we've got our single node on there, no colour grade on it yet. And it's often good practice to put a LUT on a second node, leaving the first node free to make any adjustments that you might want to make pre the lookup table. So let's just add a serial node. So if I just press Alt S, and all we have to do to apply the LUT is right hand click, Here's our LUTs, we want a 3D LUT, and you choose the camera that you want to work with, so in our case Blackmagic Design, and we choose 4K Film to Rec 709. And straight away it does all the maths for you, it's put it into the correct colour space, and you see straight away that it's enhanced that image. We've got much more contrast in there now, and a lot more saturation, in fact probably too much saturation. So what I would then do, Alt S, add another node, and just come down here and take out a bit of that saturation. So now we can just carry on grading from here. When you've got a look that you're happy with, you can save it into the gallery. This is known as a still. And then you can use that still to apply shots that are similar. So let's go back to the dog that we graded earlier. And let's just modify it a little bit. I'll just add a little bit more saturation. And then we can save the still by pressing Command Alt G. The other alternative is to right hand click in this window and say Grab Still. And what this has done is taken a snapshot of this grade. And if we right hand click in here and say display node graph, you can actually see the grade. So all I have to do to apply that to another shot is click on the shot and drag and drop. And you now see that this shot has got those two nodes that we've just created. So it's already given us our look and then we can just modify it from there. So let's add another node. This looks a little bit red actually, so let's just cool it off a little bit. So basically all the adjustments we made on shot two have now been applied to shot four. If you've got similar shots throughout your program, you can actually group them together, enabling you to just grade a single shot and all the other ones will update. So for example, in this program, we have the interview set up and that appears many times throughout the program. So if we group those clips together, we only have to grade the first one. So if we double click here where it says Apple ProRes, we can actually see the clip names. And by using the command button, we can multiple select clips with the same name. In fact, if we go to the light box, and switch on information, it's even easier to see the shots. So these three shots are now selected. If I right hand click, I can say add into new group. I call it interview01. And you see the little green chain link icon tells us that these are in a group. So let's go back to the timeline and then select one of our group clips. And to grade as a group, we just need to change a setting up here. We need to change it from clip, which is the clip on its own, to group, post clip, or pre clip. What happens now is any changes I make here will affect the other shots in the group. So let's add a bit of gamma to lift those midtones up a bit. And we can see that it's updated shots 12 and 19 as well. And what we can do now is save that as a still. Resolve has an amazing tool set to help you get pretty much any look that you want, but sometimes you just need a little bit of help with shot matching, so let's take a look at that. If we move further down the timeline to another shot, 
If we take a look at this shot, it doesn't match very well with the shot after it. So this is going to be quite a tricky grade. So what we could do is use shot match to help us get in a good starting place. So the shot I want to grade has been selected. It's got the orange box around it. And the shot I want to match to, I'm not actually going to select it, but what I am going to do is just right hand click and say shot match to this clip. And watch what happens now. So Resolve has now given us a much better starting point for the grade. So now we can work on this. Let's add another node, Alt S. And I'm just going to pull the gamma down a little bit. It's still quite bright compared to the next shot. Let's just compare that. And you see it's actually quite saturated as well. So let's pull some saturation down. And you can see there that they're matching far better already. And if you want, you could label these nodes. So I could just right click and say, change label. And then right hand click and grab a still. So to see before and after the grade, you can use the bypass tool, which is here. Or press shift D. So the color page has got many more tools, but that should be enough to get you started. And it shows how integrated the edit and color pages are. So what you could do is even apply a temporary look globally before you even start editing. And that way your log pictures, your flat images will look a little bit more contrasty and it's a little bit nicer to work with in the edit. So all you'd have to do for that is go, instead of clip, you go timeline, Alt S, and then just add a look or a lookup table or a little bit of contrast to that node. And then when you're in the edit page, all the clips that you're working with will have that look. So it's a really nice way of editing then. So now you should have a pretty good understanding of the primary color correction tools. And in the next and final episode, we're looking at delivering your finished piece. Thanks for listening.